pretend journalist and all-round butcher of the English language, David Meltzer, forever changed how Smarks analyze wrestling with the five-star system. Not that he really invented it, of course, and really it's a seven-star system, thanks to Kenneth Omega and the Rainmaker. Seven out of five. Someone makes sense of that. Of the many five-star ratings Mr. Um, uh, you know, has handed out over the years, not a single one was ever given to a Kurt Angle match. Kurt Angle, one of the most outstanding, all-round talented performers and legitimate athletes to have ever graced the squared circle. So did Angle never put on a masterpiece of a match? Or is Dave Meltzer an idiot? You can probably guess by the video length and title what the answer is here. For all of you younger fans, who might have only seen Kurt Angle's soul-destroying last run in WWE, next time you have time to kill in front of the telly, check some of these bouts out. Number 1. Kurt Angle vs Chris Benoit at Royal Rumble 2003 Angle was WWE Champion here, and he'd feuded with the Nameless One in both 2001 and 2002, the latter of which had seen them form a team for a short spell. Here was the climax of their war, as a fiery babyface Benoit was determined to finally get his hands on the WWE Championship. Angle, meanwhile, was a full-on heel here, not that it really mattered with the crazy high-impact performance he put on. In 20 minutes, these two had an all-out war with aggressive technical wrestling, suplexes galore, and an excruciating submission finish that saw a desperate Benoit finally give in to Angle's ankle luck. The heartbreak of Benoit failing at his first high-profile world title shot in well over a year, coupled with the performance of both men, led to a well-earned standing ovation from the crowd. Number 2. Kurt Angle vs Brock Lesnar on the September 18th, 2003 edition of SmackDown. A near year-long rivalry built up to this freakishly fast-paced, hour-long war. When this feud had started, Angle was very much the slimeball heel, with Lesnar as a tough guy babyface. By this point though, the roles had reversed, with Angle a redeemed hero and Lesnar a psychotic monster operating under Vince McMahon's guidance. Lesnar's heel performance here is masterful, as he completely spits on the rules and concept of the Iron Man match, relentlessly cheating early on, taking the DQ loss in order to punish and weaken Angle for later on. Angle does a great job as a babyface in peril here, using his superior wrestling technique to even the score after Lesnar's early onslaught. Ultimately though, it's not enough as Lesnar makes it to the time limit up 5-4, to four, surviving the ankle luck in the closing stretch. When it comes to WWE's hour-long Iron Man matches over the years, this was more action-packed than the classic Bret Hart Shawn Michaels one, and way more realistic and gritty than the Ruck Triple H and Cena Autumn ones. Awesome match that really solidified Lesnar as the top heel of WWE, even more so than Triple H. That was, at least, until he left less than a year later. <sighs> On a side note, Angle had received news of his sister passing away that week, and was in crippling pain with his neck issues. In one of the many examples of neither personal tragedy nor horrific injury getting in the way of him tearing the house down. Some folks are almost too tough for their own good. Number 3. Kurt Angle vs Shawn Michaels and WrestleMania 21 after years of being a relatively funny babyface and heel, 2005 saw Angle gradually turn into a darker, more psychotic character. His feud with Shawn Michaels really kicked that up, as his obsession with HBK saw him humiliate himself singing the guy's entrance theme before beating up figures from Michaels' past like Sherry Martel and Marty Jannetty. While some humour was still there, Angle's aggression and delusional promo work in the build-up added a lot of tension and intrigue to what was already a dream matchup for many fans. The match starts with Michael slapping Angle, and then we're off as the pair put together one of the most well-paced, well-built matches in WrestleMania history. Great selling, psychology, and mat work build into a big bumping blockbuster bout. 
Ultimately, Angle gets the tap out of Michaels with the ankle lock, all sold as the most agonizing thing ever by HBK in what had turned into a total war of attrition. Easy show stealer on the night that had both Big Show vs. Akebono and John Cena vs. JBL. <laughs> Incredibly mixed bag of an event, that one. The Vengeance rematch between these two later that year is also well worth a watch. Number 4. Kurt Angle vs. The Undertaker at No Way Out 2006 By 2006, Kurt Angle had dropped the funny guy stuff completely and was now a vicious, sadistic shooter aptly nicknamed The Wrestling Machine. With Batista injured, Angle was moved back to SmackDown to carry the load as World Heavyweight Champion. For No Way Out, they did a build that really saw sports entertainment collide with professional wrestling as The Undertaker's smoke and mirrors barely phased an Olympian tough guy in Angle. Come bell time, this was worked as a more technical match than the over-the-top brawls The Undertaker was often known for at the time. As the action wore on, Angle upped the ante, putting Taker through the announce table and hitting an Angle slam in the ring for a close fall. As tough as The Undertaker was here, living up to his superhuman persona by overcoming everything Angle threw at him, he's ultimately undone by superior technique, as Angle turns a submission attempt into a surprise pin for the win. Great crowd investment here, and The Undertaker's frustrated human reaction to losing, despite being such an over-the-top character, really hammered home the prestige of the world title gold they were fighting for. Number 5. Kurt Angle vs. Samoa Joe at Genesis 2006 The headbutt heard around the wrestling world kicked off this dramatic blood feud in a period where TNA really looked like it was going places. Angle was their biggest signing since Sting at the time, and coming into the match, Samoa Joe was undefeated in the six-sided ring, and the feud was pretty straightforward, as Angle, a legit Olympian from the WWE, takes the fight to a newer, undefeated shooter in Samoa Joe, determined to humble his fiery new rival and establish himself as a top dog in a new promotion. Samoa Joe was excellent as a big bully heel back then, pummeling Angle and busting him open, with the blood adding that extra bit of drama to the hard-hitting action. Some inventive submission exchanges here and, as is to be expected from Prime Samoa Joe, a lot of stiff, explosive striking and intensity. Angle sells Joe's brutal offense well, ensuring he looks like a killer throughout the match. Ultimately though, it's Angle who really comes across as the killer here, tapping Joe out with the ankle luck after surviving the head-busting beatdown earlier on. Some didn't like that Angle, a former WWE guy who just joined, got to end Joe's undefeated streak. However, bringing a top guy like that in only to jub him in his first pay-per-view bout would have been a disaster and having him win firmly established a long-running, well-received rivalry between the pair, making it a win overall. Number 6. Kurt Angle vs Samoa Joe at Lockdown 2008 In one of the best blends of MMA and pro wrestling ever done, Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe put on a stiff, submissions-focused masterclass for the TNA World Championship. Evil Angle was in full swing in 2008, and he comes in here dressed as an MMA fighter, working a shoot style, out to destroy his original TNA nemesis once and for all. The stipulation was title versus career, which pretty much gave away Joe was winning the belt, but the dramatic, competition-focused build and the intense, realistic action made for a great coronation of the guy who was meant to become TNA's top star back then. Needless to say, a disappointing title run and the absolute horror of the Hogan Bischoff Russo era completely ruined Samoa Joe's TNA run, but at least his sole world championship reign kicked off with a bang. Number 7 Kurt Angle vs. Mr. Anderson at Lockdown 2010. Mr. Anderson was such a natural at playing a complete jerk when he first came to TNA, it made for some truly hilarious heel work. Angle, meanwhile, was a grizzled babyface here, tired of Anderson mucking him and out to humble the guy once and for all. A storyline revolving around Anderson's disrespect for everything, from Kurt Angle himself to the US military, 
ensured there was a strong sense of hatred between the pair, as Anderson's reckless brawling collided with Angle's more technical approach to the ring. Angle sells well for Anderson's scumbag offense throughout, timing his babyface comebacks neatly within the overall pace of the match. The hatred between the pair is so strong, they both forego chances to escape the cage and win the match, in order to sadistically punish each other some more. Angle crushes Anderson with a massive series of German suplexes, and busts out one of his insane, top cage moonsaults down the road as well. The whole match is great for action and storytelling, with a satisfying payoff of Angle choking Anderson out, spitting on him, stomping on his junk, and finally leaving the cage as the victor. So there's seven arguable five-star classics from the Olympic hero. Arguments can be made for plenty of others, though, because Angle, in his day, was one of the absolute best to ever do it.